how's it going everybody? Shades here, Shades of Clarity channel. Good to see you. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, some familiar territory today and discussing, yes, once again, alcoholic hallucinosis. Been through it twice and it was very unpleasant, very terrifying, uh, especially the first time and I didn't know what to expect and all of a sudden I thought I was in a matrix in a uh, kind of crazy world created by my own mind and the alcohol withdrawal and everything else. I thought people were in a, I was in a simulation and the treatment center had hired these people to play act. Uh, and it was very, very persecutory and, and it, it was just awful. So I may have touched on this in the other videos. What is alcoholic hallucinosis? It's a uh, complication of chronic alcohol abuse characterized by predominantly auditory hallucinations that occur during or after a period of heavy alcohol consumption. It is different from delirium tremens. Usually it presents with alcoholic uh, acoustic verbal hallucinations, delusions, and mood disorders arising in clear consciousness and sometimes may progress, progress to a chronic uh, form resembling schizophrenia. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Some people, uh, according to one study, three and a half percent that participated in this study never recovered. Their their minds just stayed in a state of, of hallucinations. They kept hallucinating even though the alcohol had been withdrawn and they were abstinent. That's it's, it's really unfortunate. Um, I wonder what would happen if somebody with schizophrenia actually withdrew from alcohol and then kept suffering symptoms like that. Mm, food for thought. Definitely alcohol and schizophrenia wouldn't mix. Alcohol and me don't mix. So alcohol, alcoholic hallucino hallucinosis typically starts within six to 12 hours uh, of the last drink and it can come on very rapidly. It may be accompanied by nausea, dizziness, tremulousness, a feeling of unease, nervousness, or in my case, I felt completely fine. I was just sort of out of my head. Uh, ended up having to go to the hospital and have some uh, IV uh, medications given to uh, to stop it. It was very, very, uh, very disturbing and crazy. And I, at the time, was very ashamed that you know I haven't gotten myself back once again in a situation where I needed treatment but to withdraw by yourself is never a good idea. And I'd like to state up front, I'm not a uh, licensed medical provider. If you're having any kind of crisis uh, due to substance abuse, alcoholism, alcohol use disorder, please uh, see your primary care provider, your PA, your physician, your nurse practitioner, or if it's really bad, uh, call 911 or go to the emergency room. So, Alcoholic hallucinosis is kind of strange because there's a lot of unanswered questions about it. Uh, the medical literature does suggest it is caused by alcohol withdrawal, but there are some questions that are that do, do remain. Uh, the literature does say that deficiencies normally caused by drinking too much and a lack of thiamine, foliate, zinc, phosphate, magnesium, and Usually vitamins uh, administered at a hospital will, will take care of that. Now, how does, it, how does it work in the brain exactly? How does that work? Well, I've got something I'd like to read to you. There was some literature that I found, uh, a medical journal. Uh, and it was talking about areas of the brain. And it said, how about one study showed by using single photon emission computed tobography, SPECT noted decreased regional blood flow in the frontal lobes, left basal ganglia, and left thalamus. Alcoholic hallucinosis, when treated with benzodiazepines, hallucinations disappeared, and SPECT showed normalization of blood flow in basal ganglia and thalamus, but not in the frontal lobes. It was also reported uh, reduced thalamic activity using SPECT. Management has always been with abstinence from alcohol and use of neuroleptics, which are the antipsychotic medications. 
Valproate has also been found to be effective in the treatment of alcoholic hallucinosis and was well tolerated, and that was in one study. I mean, the, the bottom line is, people, you're, you, you've got to get the alcohol under control. If you're an alcoholic, you, you cannot be putting this stuff in your body anymore. And I picked up a red chip at AA last night. I'm a little over, it was a 30, a red 30 day chip, but I've been sober since the 23rd of June. Um, clean and sober, and I'm happy about that. If anybody's you know, celebrating 30 days, good for you, good on you. Uh, if you're working, if you just picked up that white chip, that's good too. Uh, AA is my thing. I don't advocate for it. Uh, whatever program works for you, that's great. And the parts of the brain uh, that seem to be affected the most in alcoholic hallucinosis, you have the thalamus is an area of your brain, uh, is your body's information relay station. All information from your body's senses except smell must be processed through your thalamus before being sent to your brain's central cortex for interpretation. Your thalamus also plays a role in sleep, wakefulness, consciousness, learning, and memory. And then you have the basal ganglia or ganglia. Basal ganglia is responsible for movement control, decision-making, and is involved with functioning of your brain's processes with reward, rewards, habits, and motivation. The basal ganglia also have a role in illnesses like addiction. So here we are with the, uh, the connection between, you know, uh, problems in your neurochemistry and withdrawal. And again, alcoholic hallucinosis is not DT or delirium tremens. There, there is a, a difference in that. Delirium tremens, of course, you may not know what day it is or who you are uh, with alcohol, and you'll you usually have a fever with that, and you, you're so delirious, you, you don't, you're just not in your head. Sometimes people have to be restrained. Uh, they're going through uh, delirium tremens. Typically, alcoholic hallucinosis, you know you're, you're hallucinating. It's just very, very frightening. There was a book published in 1944 called The Lost Weekend by Charles R. Jackson. And it deals with, I think it was semi-autobiographical. I think Mr. Jackson probably was an alcoholic, had a uh, alcohol uh, use disorder. And it just follows a man on a five-day drinking binge and all that he's really left with is his girlfriend and it was made into a academy award winning actually the the movie won an oscar the following year in 1945 with uh, ray millard as don burnham he's the protagonist uh in the movie and that's kind of what i wanted to do with this video is show some of you know the alcohol use disorder and alcoholic hallucinosis in films and I'd like to show that to you right now enjoy and here's the movie poster uh, that came out for the movie the following year and here's Don Burnham thinking that uh, he can't write anything like his talents have peaked at age 19 and he's just not doing anything here he is Going into alcoholic hallucinosis. Oh boy, great. The sweats. Yeah, he's feeling it all right. Not feeling too good. Oh, there's a rat. A nasty old rat coming out of the wall. A bat. It's on the wall. Oh, God. Yeah, it's bad. This is going to last about, I don't know, 6 to 12 hours or so, just writhing. I know, I've been there and it's not fun. And consequently, uh, Millard won uh, an Academy Award for uh, Best Actor in that movie. It's really, really powerful. It's, it's, it's a really good film uh, set in kind of a seedy, run-down Manhattan era, uh, area in the 1930s. And he just, as, as stated, you know, thought that his writing 
career was over, he was done, he couldn't come up with new ideas. I mean, shoot, I write. I got writer's block all the time. You know, and then when I really, really just free my mind, you know, I'm able to let it flow and it comes out well. When I was drinking early, early in my drinking career, when I was, you know, in college, I would drink beer and I would loosen up. I would loosen up to the point where, you know, I could really crank it out. You know, I wasn't looking at it going, God, this is, this is rubbish. This is, this is horrible. It, it usually just made it good. And I've gone back and read some of that stuff and I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. I, I wish I could still write like that, <laughs> you know, not drink like that. Even though I wasn't drinking that much then, uh, the, 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 the later on, the, the writing really got sketchy and, and patchy and it wasn't really cohesive. It's too many adjectives and just it just wasn't good. I could tell sober shades writing from drunken shades writing and the two are just incomparable. It's just it's just unreal what this disease does. And that brings me back to, I mean, what's the answer? What's the answer? Alcoholic hallucinosis, delirium, tremens. If you don't drink, you don't have to go through it. And people that are heavy drinkers, uh, I don't want to single anybody out, but I would imagine that hard liquor probably drinking very, or drunk very frequently, uh, especially somebody that's had a bench pattern like me, off, on, off, on, off, on, you know, etc. have dealt with having that kindling effect in the brain where you're, you know, the lightest little uh, amount of alcohol kicks off the withdrawal syndrome and it just gets worse over time. And that's why, you know, I'm telling you, this stuff is just death. Uh, that is where drinking will lead you if you have an alcohol use disorder and you continue to drink. Guaranteed you'll end up in jails, institutions, and death. That's just a fact. Or your your organs shut down. And recently I had somebody succumb to that and it, it wasn't pleasant to deal with emotionally or just to know that the person just I, I, if they gave up, they gave up. I don't know. They just didn't stop drinking, and that's what happened. Alcoholic steatohepatitis, fatty liver, gives way to cirrhosis, which gives way to liver failure and ascites. I mean, it's progression. It, 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 if, if you don't die today or tomorrow, you may die six months from now, a year from now. But it's going to be fatal if you've stepped over that line and uh, you're, you're, you just can't stop drinking. And my heart goes out to anybody who's struggling. Uh, please get the help that you need. Um, I don't want to hear about any more casualties. I'm tired of people dying from this disease. I'm tired of people, you know, in other, in the dry goods uh, category. Addiction is terrible. Uh, it's something that, that, that I, I, I'm getting a lot better. I, I don't crave the crap, you know, just don't think about it all that much. Uh, I don't, uh, I may, there may be fleeting instances and times when I do think about it, but then I think again about the hallucinosis and the withdrawal and what is surely to follow. And a lot of times I can't gauge what that is. This be may end up naked on the side of the road. I, one time I was walking into traffic because I'd had a couple of wines and walked out of this bar and th the police came and, and they said uh, somebody was walking in the street. And I didn't remember anything except the cop coming up to me asking me if I was okay to give me a ride home. It was quite embarrassing. I think the people at the restaurant called the police uh, because they would only give me two wines after that and I would go up there two glasses and that was it but yeah you know it's you just can't do it you can't drink anymore if you got a problem and that just solves so many other future problems uh I guess that about wraps it up if you really like uh, my content uh, please subscribe uh, hit the bell that way you'll know when I drop some more dope content 
And there's also some more videos you might want to check out that, uh, that I've done. I've also done two other uh, videos on alcoholic hallucinosis. I hope you guys have a really great day. And as always, take it easy and I'll see you later.